Naomi, you're the chief executive of a large public sector organisation. How do you stay relevant, relevant to you, all your people? Can you tell us about what would we see if we looked in the window of you in action? How do people see you? What are you doing? What tools do you use? Uh, a mix of formal and informal. So we'll use some of our formal communications challenges for messages from Naomi, be that you know, video or, or word. Um, the informal, so I'll go and visit some of our sites uh, in the building that I work in. I run up and down the stairs to get my coffee uh, and chat to people as I'm doing it. So you're human with people uh, and you just find different channels and different ways of having that engagement, making sure you're at team leader events, making sure you're at some training events on technical training and just popping in to say hello, how's it going, how's this uh, helping you do your job uh, and so really being out and about and visible and involved in the business and that for me that's quite important that uh, I can go into a team and understand the business, understand what they're doing and how they're contributing and can have a conversation with them that explains and links that to what we're doing with transformation or the part that they're paying. So I'm constantly looking for those ways to connect parts of the organisation together because I think it's one of the things that I bring is that over, un, overarching understanding uh, and so the ability to connect people with the part that they're playing in our, our current and the part they're playing in our future is really important. And what about your SLT or ELT? Uh, are they out and about in the same way and having touch points regularly with your staff? Some more than others, depending on the role. So one of the things we've just done is, is restructure the executive leadership team. Um, but, you know, my chief technology officer was down in our office in Dunedin recently talking to the frontline staff there to understand how the services he provides makes a difference to the job that they do, which makes a difference to customers. As part of that restructuring, you recently appointed a chief people officer. Mm -hmm. Tell us what led to that decision. So with my uh, senior leadership team as, as was, we sat back and really thought about the journey ahead, what we needed to do to lead the organisation through transformation and the skills and capabilities we needed around the top table. Uh, and that led to uh, a, a change in the <coughs> makeup of that top table and a, a change in our governance arrangements. Uh, and we really, you know, we recognise that, as you say, we are a large people organisation. And if we're going to change, then we have to take our people with us in that journey. We have to use the skills that we've got. We have to develop new ones. So thinking about how we actually use our talent and how we build our talent for us is a key part of transformation. Uh, and really important that the person leading that work was a member of the executive leadership team. And thinking about that from a strategic point of view and contributing to our transformation not just waiting until we'd all decided what we wanted to do and then putting in an HR intervention. How much time do you reckon your ELT would spend talking about people things? I think it really depends what you mean by people things. So in some ways every conversation we have has a people element because it's all about how we do our work, the skills that we need, the place that we want to take the organisation to, what that will mean. So actually a lot of time how much time we specifically spend talking about what's the uh, REM strategy. Um, not, you know, probably every meeting there's something of that technical nature, but actually every conversation we have is about how are we going to move the organisation forward. And that for me is why it was really important that our Chief People Officer was at the table to have those conversations.